So in this video we're going to examine Euler's identity, and this is what's by many considered to be one of the most important identities in mathematics as it links many of the fundamental constants together that occur in math a lot. So we have Euler's number, which is this expression here, the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over n to the n. We have the imaginary number here, which is the square root of negative 1. We have 1, which is the multiplicative identity. Then we have 0, which is the addi additive identity. Then we have pi, which is the circle ratio. So in order to further understand what's going on here, we need to set it up in a uh, Maclaurin series. So e to the i pi, by looking at this expression, we know must equal negative 1. But it's hard to tell why it equals negative 1, because this isn't something that's easy to do necessarily algebraically in your head. For most people. So let's set that up as a Maclaurin series. Now to set up a Maclaurin series we're going to take a series of derivatives, a series of polynomials, and a series of factorials. So let's start off with our zeroth derivative and we're going to be exchanging pi out for x, just any arbitrary constant. So our zeroth derivative is essentially the baseline function that we start with. So we have e to the ix. And now what we're going to do is we are going to set x equals to 0, and we are going to get 1 here. And now we are going to go through the same process with all the rows, and we are going to have a 0th polynomial, which is x to the 0, and we are going to have a 0th factorial, which is going to be 0 factorial, which is 1. Don't don't write this as 0, this is never 0, it's always 1, it's sometimes confusing. But um, now we're going to do this, the first derivative, which is going to be i e to the i x, because we have to do our chain rule. And now this here, we set x equals to 0, and we're going to get i. So it's fairly self-explanatory, it's just going to be whatever this here is multiplied by. So this is multiplied by 1 and this is multiplied by i, so just keep doing that. Now we have our first polynomial which is going to be x to the 1 and now we're going to have 1 factorial. And we're just going to repeat this process. I think I'll go down to maybe about 6. And uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut the video out and restart at a point where I have this finished for you. And I'm back. So basically what happens here is it's going to alternate through all the powers of i. See i to the 0 is 1, i to the 1 is i, i squared is negative 1, i cubed is negative i, and so on. And it just continues through that pattern. So our goal here is going to be to turn it into a series. So this is going to run down all the powers of i that are positive integers. And this is running down all the positive integer powers, and this is running through all the positive integers. And it starts at 0. So what we're going to do with this is we are going to take it and we can easily turn it into a series. And the series is going to start at n equals 0. And it's going to be i times x to the n over n factorial. Now, the interesting thing about this theory series is that if you write it out, which you can, I'm not going to here, it's not that hard, all you have to do is plug in all your n's for your index, but you can actually split this series up into two other series. Technically speaking, you can split it up into as many series as, as you want, but we're going to do two in this case. And they're going to be familiar series for anyone that's looked at Taylor series and Maclaurin series. These will have come up in your classes. 
At least they probably will have. So you can split it up into this series here. Oopsie. 2n over 2n factorial plus i times this sum here, which also is going to start at zero. Negative one. So essentially, as you can see, what's happened here so I've taken all the terms of the series that have i and I've put them into one series and I've taken all the ones that don't have i and put them into another. So the one that deals with i is going to be dealing with all odd integers and the one that's not dealing with i is all even integers. Now for those of you that have taken this I said these should look familiar and that is because this series here becomes sine x in this series here becomes cosine x and we're gonna have to multiply it by i because that's what we have in the front here it comes down so now we have up top we have e to the i x is equal to cosine of x plus i sine x now the simple question is how do we get the pi in there and that's actually very simple we, all we have to do is evaluate at pi so you're going to take this and we are going to evaluate it. I'm just going to translate it up here so that we remember what we're working with. So now all we have to do is plug in and solve for pi. So sine of pi is zero. So this entire piece is going to go to zero and cosine of pi is negative one so that is how we get e to the i pi oh dear that's what is up with these pies lately you just don't want to cooperate with me at all and that is how you get e to the i pi is equal to negative one so this is going to come up a lot. I'm probably going to end up using it in other videos for other little tidbits. It comes up in complex numbers sometimes and dealing with contour integrals if we ever do get to that. But this is a useful proof. It ties together lots of constants and it's just generally pretty to look at, which is why I personally like it. So that about wraps that up.